fuck. She the microphone. That's why you couldn't hear me. Is there one for the webcam listed? Yeah. Use that one. What do you mean? Switch it from mic from that to the microphone on the webcam. Oh. <laughs> Best glitch ever. Best glitch ever. Say something. <laughs> um, I'm going to restart the call. I'm going to restart the call. One second. One second. Best glitch ever. <laughs> oh, my God. Nope. Still bust. Switch it back. Switch it back. <laughs> How's that? That's we'll live with it. Oh my god, that was the best glitch ever. What what happened? Jerry used to play the old video games like uh with with the okay, never mind. I'm talking like, you're asking. I'm talking the Atari stuff. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to have Atari you or what? Nintendo. My mom was anti video game. For a second there you sounded like, you know, like the old school silos like Bio Command. It was like it was awesome. Best glitch ever. Well, I meant to do that. You're going to hear it. On, I'm going to put this in the recorded bit because that is the best glitch we've ever had. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, I hear the telltale jingle, Bridget. Hey, Bridget. timing. The internet misses you. Yeah, you're you. just going to lay down your box. <laughs> you don't want to see. Okay, she's just going to lay down her box. <laughs> Would you like to play a game? <laughs> That was awesome. I laughed at that in Captain America too. Would you like to play a game? And then she's like, it's from I know. <laughs> I kind of love it when Captain America gets a little bitchy. Uh, all right. So. Here, Bridget. We, Bridget, what, what the hell is she doing? She's like just staring at me. The internet can fucking wait, bitch. I've got shit to do. You don't own me. Just sitting here staring at me. Come here. Whatever. I do what I want. I do what I want. She's like literally just out of my reach, just like taunting me. Was the best. Anyway. Um. Oh, there we go. Uh oh. There we go, kids. There's your kitty. There's your kitty on the internet. Look, it's your adoring public. She is so indifferent. She's like, what? I think that's great. Do they have chicken? They don't have chicken? I don't, I don't really fucking care. Hey, Bridget, Bridget, Bridget. Fast moving things. Fast moving things. Oh, oh, what's going on? What's going on? We're all done? Okay. We're all done. <laughs> Fuck Bye. off! Although the fast moving things might work because yeah. she's at, Bridget's actually a really big fan of the Avengers. That's like my default movie. If I just want to throw on a movie and I don't want to decide what movie, I throw on the Avengers. And Bridget kind of loves that movie. Like she sits the whole time and it's just like right in front of the screen. Yeah. Yeah. But I've seen the Avengers about 23 times. So whatever. But she's like riveted. I think it's because there's lots of bright colors and things moving around. But she's just so like, it's a lot like my audience. Oh, it's so shiny. Goodbye, guys. And I'm, I'm sorry. But anyway, and we, you know, we've already established that she likes Thor. So, shall we get to the nonsense? Yes. All right. Now that I have no funny voices and no cat, I got nothing left to offer you. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, and bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? Okay, so this week, um, Facebook had a moment. A brief moment where some users could not use Facebook. This wasn't even... Yeah, it went down for a little bit. Right. This wasn't even a universal outage. Just some people couldn't use Facebook. And of course, predictably, 
Los Angeles lost its shit. Los Angeles. Los Angeles, California. Panicking citizens flood police with 911 calls. How is that an emergency? Because, you know, Hollywood doesn't have its Facebook. How is that an emergency? I can't post pictures of my lunch. It just is. Uh, Facebook went down last week for about an hour. One hour. But that didn't stop people from panicking. Usage of other social networks spiked during that time. And apparently so did 911 call to the Los Angeles County Police Department. Residents are nervous. Because the LAPD has nothing better to do. Yeah, they don't have, you know, I guess there's just not enough black people to beat up. Must have been a slow day. Ever seen some of the video out of LAPD? It's some scary shit. It's like... New York isn't any better anymore. No, it really isn't. Um, residents were nervous they'd been cut off from Facebook, had 911 on their speed dial, along with standard number to the police department itself. Calls came flooding in during the outage and forced the department to send out a Twitter message to remind face residents that Facebook is not a law enforcement issue. I'm going to show you this tweet. This is a tweet that a police department had to make. It says, Facebook is not a law enforcement issue. Please don't call us about being it down. We don't know when it will be back up. <laughs> It's also not a fucking emergency. No! Do you know what's an emergency? Are you on fire? Yes. If you are on fire, this is a fucking emergency. If are, the problem is that you're on fire and you can't post about it to Facebook. Not an emergency! No, well, I mean, half of that's half. an emergency. Half of it's just, you're a fucking moron. Is there a red liquid coming out of a brand new hole on your body? No, not an emergency. I'm trying to think of ways that could be fun. <laughs> You're not, not with my audience. You, you, you go to an awful, awful place. Don't, 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 no. Please, no. Is, I mean, is there water up to your neck and you're indoors? That's an emergency. Yes. Are you being mauled by a bear? Emergency. Facebook being down is not a good idea of emergency. Is I'm there somebody standing over you naked with a baseball bat? I'm Plus. sorry if you can't Instagram. You. I'm sorry if you can't Instagram your seaweed roll. Sometimes life just sucks like that. Oh, there, still there. Tara's got her serious face on, and I think she locked up. You were fine there for a second, and then it got all weird. Now you look like you're in, a, in an 80s video. Now I'm just trying to do weird stuff, but it looks cool and mosaic. <laughs> It kind of does, actually. It kind of looks like this is on purpose in a weird way. I made of Lego. I made of Lego. <laughs> Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're made of Lego. It's starting to clear up. We'll, we'll just have to run with it for now. Hey, right, guys. Yeah, it actually is clearing up a little bit. Okay. Okay. I get, you know, it's not perfect, but we'll run with it. Um,. So, yes, Facebook, not an emergency. We should move on here. Um, lots of people get in trouble for blogs they keep. It's and this is another Facebook thing. People may post to Facebook and their their work finds out. And for whatever reason, their work doesn't like it. And, you know, I can understand that for some things. But this is what happens when your work are stupid. Education blogger fired for writing 
about homophones and confusing homophobes. Oh, we lost Tara again. Hang on. Oh, that's nice. Oh, wait, you're coming back. Coming back. There you go. Now you're back. Anyway. The education blogger... F what? It's horribly wrong. Education blogger fired for writing about homophones and confusing homophobes. A Utah teacher and education blogger says he was fired from the Noman Global Language Center in Provo after writing a blog post about homophones, though he disputes Muter reports that he was let go for promoting a, quote, gay agenda. Self-described social media specialist and contact provider Tim Torkelson, wow, what a name, recounted the firing in a personal blog post, which was subsequently picked up by the Salt Lake City Tribu Tribune and other outlets. According to that account, Noman Global owner Clark Wooger, Wooger, Wooger. You have a great name. I know. Was concerned Wooger. about a, that a post about homophones, words that sound the same but are defined differently, like you know, wood and wood, W O O D and W O U L D, wood and wood. Those are homophones. They sound the same. They're spelled different. They really shouldn't sound the same. Yeah. But that uh, meant the school would be associated with homosexuality. Call me into a conference room. He said, quote, we're going to let you go. He said this blog on homophones is the last straw. Oh, for fuck's sake, Tara. Um, you can't be trusted. I can't trust you to write a regular blog. Said Woodger's words to me were, quote, some people might think a blog on homophones has something to do with homosexuality. Said he hadn't looked the word up, and then he realized what it was. Objection mainly was he thought the students would not understand, that they'd become offended or think the school would have some sort of gay agenda. This is a lot of about... Tara's having problems, yes. It's a blog about the English language yeah, so, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's not bad to keep a blog about stuff, about your work, about your job. But when your job doesn't even understand what you're doing, and they hired you, and, and they don't understand words or think good, that's a problem. These are, these are people who are supposed to be, you know, in charge of teaching English. When the guy in charge of teaching English does not know a basic entry-level English concept. This is, this is shit I got taught in elementary school. Did, did, Tara, did you get taught homophones in elementary school? My nephew's learning them now. I went over them with him during his... Oh, yeah. Your nephew's learning them now. What is he? Uh, he's 10? He's 9. He's 9. Okay. So that's basic shit. What the fuck? How does the guy in charge not know the basic shit? Well, and here's the thing. This is an education blog, right? Yeah. So it's, these are all educators. Yes. These are people that are teaching. Yes. They should presumably know these things. Yes, they things. should. And they do not. So scary. Where is this Utah? Apparently, the, 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 the people have gotten so dumb that any homo thing scares the piss out of them. I wonder what would happen if you told this guy he's a homo thing. Homo just means same, if I'm not mistaken. Same. Yes. Phone means sound. Do you remember that thing called Latin? It's where most romantic languages evolved from. Ours is a romantic language. That doesn't mean it wants to fuck you. That means it's based from Rome. It comes from Latin. It's a romance language. There you go.
And these people are teaching. Well, if it wants to fuck you, it's just going to buy you dinner first. And these. Oh, poor language. <laughs> <laughs> and these people are teaching people who don't speak English how to speak English. So they're just making shit worse. Speak English! We're trying to! You not do it good! Listen to me! I sound like an idiot! That's your fault. To be fair, English is a kind of insane language. It is, a little, a little bit. Not the parts we stole from Latin. Those parts are fine and make sense. Uh... English is Germanic. All right, I'm being corrected. English, a Germanic, romantic, horrifying love child language. I thought... Hmm. English beats up other languages in back alleys and rifles their pocket for grammar and vocabulary. So English is, is truly the language of America, then. English is a horror language. Yes. Someone in your house is downloading porn, Tara. Is it Bridget? Is Probably. Bridget, is Bridget who, downloading porn? I mean, who knows what she gets into when nobody's looking. The cat's downloading porn. It, it's not Skype. It's my whole internet. It's like the links are taken forever. The stream kept shutting down on me tonight. It's not Skype. And we're like, switch back to Google Hangouts. Then. Thank Google. you, Verizon. It's, it's, I mean, we're having some weather. It's been thunderstorming. Maybe there's something down somewhere. You know, in 10 years, we're going to be paying $200 for a month of in internet, and we're going to be lucky if we can, like, load a page. And they're going to, and that's, that's going to be considered the best internet in the world. Meanwhile, in South like Korea... You. You're an optimist. Meanwhile, in, in, North, in South Korea, they're going to be downloading whole people in 3D printers at that point. Kara, stop... Chris Evans porn. <laughs> so this is one that is going to strike a chord with many in our audience, especially the nostalgia crowd. Do you remember the Kool-Aid man? Well, I'm sure if Tara could hear me right now, she'd say... Or should I say, oh, yeah! Yeah. Mm -hmm. This, the, the, the Kool-Aid man, he had, an, he had a very profound effect on our, on our culture over the years. Um, maybe a bit too profound. Thirsty thief breaks through brick wall for beer. Bluffton, yeah. South Carolina. A man broke through the brick wall of a convenience store in the low country where sheriff's investigators say he stole a 12 pack of beer. The Beaufort County Sheriff's Office are trying to identify the man broke into the Enmark store on Commerce Place, West Bluffton early Tuesday morning. Investigators say he created a large hole in the brick wall at the rear of the building. He went to the store, took a 12 pack of beer, and left the way he came. Beaver County Sheriff's released really security camera photo of the subject who's wearing a red shirt with a large tear in the back, blue jeans, gloves, and a black rag over his face. So they don't say exactly how he made the hole. So it is entirely well, possible. Did he figure it is entirely through that walk. It is entirely possible. But, oh yeah, alcoholic man. That that is that is a long way to go for a twelve pack. There have got to be easier ways to do that shit. They're serious. I mean, for a 12 pack, you bust through a wall and you take a 12 pack. I know at that point, take like two or two or yeah, take a couple for the road because you obviously had a big, big thirst. You needed a big, big drink. Take a case. Man, if you break through a wall to steal shit, in case you were wondering. This is, again, a case of one of those, okay, the property damage and the legal case are going to far exceed the cost of one 12-pack of beer. Not really worth it in the long run. No. It's one of those... <gasps> you never watched Fringe, did you? I did watch Fringe. I watched all of Fringe. 
you remember the episode where they robbed a safe deposit box in a bank by using that tech that lets them like phase through the wall? Yes. Maybe there's some fringe of it. <laughs> and the one guy, like they had to shut it down early, so one guy got stuck, stuck in the wall. Yeah. the wall. And they had to shoot him. The only face halfway through. It'd be a horrible way to die. Can you imagine? This, they did that on the X Files too, where pe- two people having sex got like fused together by a astronomical event, and just God, that'd be horrible. Oh, retro two K two eighty three going back a few years. Was it the Schlitz malt liquor bowl? Wow, that takes me back. You don't remember him? I don't understand that reference. You don't remember the Schlitz malt liquor commercials where the bull would bust through the wall? You don't? Wow. I remember that shit. It was on, you know, Monday Night Football all the time. My dad watched it and I saw it. Your dad didn't watch football? He, like, did. My dad kept farmer's hours, so he was usually in bed by, like, nine. So if you watch football, it was usually on Sunday. He didn't watch Monday night because he went to bed very early. You know, it, he was up at like five every morning. So he didn't usually do Monday night. He watch on Sunday. It's occurring to me this guy could have found a wall at an abandoned building, got a friend in a video camera, broken through it, put that shit on YouTube, and then he would have enough money for the twelve pack of beer. You know what the other option is? What? That this poor bastard was outside that place with a pickaxe for fucking hours. And here's an interesting question. Why did he bust a window? What if the store was open for some of those hours? (laughs) Jim? And the employees were just like, bro, what are you doing? No, no. Okay. Do you hear that? It's the rats. Those are some big fucking rats, man. What? what yeah. What you, what's sir? Don't worry about it. Okay. Some big goddamn rats. R-O-U-S's. Yeah. Rodents of unusual size? I don't believe they exist. <laughs> Here's another one of our, our drunken mishaps. Um, you, you ever gotten so drunk you forgot which car was yours? No. Never done that. I have both done that and I once spent. I'm a designated driver a lot. I was once in a parking lot and I spent five minutes trying to unlock my car and not realizing that I was trying to get into a Ford Focus and I drove a Ford Mustang. That's not. Those aren't alike. They were the same color, though. <laughs> and the key fit is, in the lock. What's been messing me up lately is I just got a new car. And I, I'm not 100% used to it, so I'll go into parking lots and be looking for my old car. Yeah. Which is twice the size of my new car and a different color. <sighs> I'm just like, where the fuck is the car? Why can't I find... Oh, I don't drive that anymore. Well, I don't think I've ever gone quite this far. Um, woman charged with trying to steal police car. Unmarked vehicle was idling in strip district. The problem for her was there were two officers inside. Woman was arrested early Saturday. Maybe she was offering them a private dance. No, no, it's her reasoning is amazing. Woman was arrested early Saturday morning on charges she tried to steal an idling unmarked police car with two officers inside. According to the police reports, three Pittsburgh officers were sitting in the car just after 2 a.m. when um, uh, the officer sitting in the driver's seat had stepped out of the car to make a phone call. While Officer Garrett uh, Spory, sitting in the passenger seat, was observing a crowd of five, six people in front of the vehicle who had clearly noticed our uncovered vehicle. A woman in the group, identified as Rhea Buford, 32, of Highland Park, walked over and sat down in the driver's seat of the car. Officer Spory tried to push her out, yelling, Please, Pittsburgh police, get out of the car. Now you're under arrest. Miss Buford informed officers that she would be taking the car to drive it to her car. 
At which point, officers in the back seat also started to yell at her to get out of the vehicle. They're both ted- terrified she was going to attempt to drive away with both of us inside. You're cops. There were three of you police officers, and you were terrified of this one chick who it doesn't even say was armed. Well, I, I, there is that, but you outnumber her and you're probably armed with at least a teaser. If you're too drunk, you can't walk back to your car and you need to commandeer another car to get you to your car. Yours should not drive. No. (sighs) Can I just call everyone's attention to the little survey on the right hand side of the screen yeah do you need any baseball extend the designated hitter roll to the national league no fuck you that's for pussies mine says when eating chicken Don't wings fucking hit mine says when eating chicken wings which part do you like best i don't think that has anything to do with the national hitting rule or to one part are there more than one part to a chicken wing i don't know drum Isn't slash legs Flat slash wings. I like both equally. I never eat wings. I'm going to tell them I never eat wings. I'm submitting this. Because, you know, I don't. Extend the designated hitter role to the national. Hey, fuck you. Pussy ass pitchers can't hit. I don't want to hear it. You hit. I mean, Jesus, God. You learn a fucking bunt. Trying to. No, it's okay. I'm just driving to my car. I'll give it right back. If you're that drunk, that makes sense. You got a problem. That's hung up on the fact that three cops were totally... (laughs) Holy shit, drunk lady! Like, I'm not saying you have to beat the crap out of her, but you could probably get her out of your vehicle. Yeah, she's not that well coordinated at that point. I probably... Like, you're not, you're clearly not dealing with Natasha Romanoff here. You're probably going to be able to take care of it. Maybe she was. Maybe that that was, you know, she was on her off hours and she got a call from Nick Fury. Can you even imagine? Oh, shit. The one I fuckers call. We got to see the world. Where's the car? (laughs) Steve? Steve, where's the car? Where's your car, Steve? Like, Fury is just like, God damn it, Steve. Go get her. <laughs> She's on your fucking team. I don't want to hear about it. Just, just go get her. So. Apparently, and, and this is this is happening more and more. Um, it keeps popping up on tech sites. Yelp is apparently the biggest fucking headache for businesses because they have absolutely no control over the reviews at all. People can get on Yelp and they can post a review and there's not a fucking thing businesses can do about it. So they're trying to do something about it. And the good businesses, here's what you're supposed to do. You read the reviews. Some of them are trolls, but the legitimate ones, you see what they're saying. You take that shit into the account. You change your business for the better. Unfortunately, there is the other way to attempt to handle the situation, which is not as smart Hotel finds bride $500 for every negative Yelp review their wedding guests leave. What? New York Post reports that the Union Street Guest House in Hudson, New York, that's the Union Street Guest House in Hudson, New York, finds couples $500 for every negative review posted online on any website by one of their guests, but it doesn't end there. The hotel will also fine you $500 if you're staying there to attend a wedding at another venue in the area, but leave a negative review about your stay. Hotel, which the Post reports is an estate built by the Vanderbilts and the Rockefellers, has this policy on its website. Please know that despite the fact that wedding couples love a Hudson and are in, your friends and family may not. If you've booked the inn for a wedding or any other type of event where somewhere with the region and given us a deposit of any kind for guests to stay at USGH, 
There will be a $500 fine that will be deducted from your deposit for every negative review of USGH placed on any internet site by anyone in your party or any attending your wedding event. <laughs> the hotel agrees to give you your money back if the negative review is taken offline. That's extortion. That's a felony. But even better, apparently, and it's, it's hilarious, this is a Vanderbilt establishment considering the shit they went through with Zuckerberg. Apparently, they've never heard of the Internet. Yeah. Yeah, that's not going to work out. Yeah, um, paging Barbara Streisand, paging Barbara Streisand to the right white courtesy phone, Mrs. Streisand to the white courtesy phone. Yeah. Apparently. Is there no excuse for that shit anymore. It's 2014. The internet has all over every possible way you can think of. There's no excuse to not know about it. There's no excuse to not know that if you're going to do a stupid fucking thing on your website about another website, being it's going to find out and rake you over the coal. They did. One star reviews started pouring. So many one single star reviews started pouring in. It was just, it was amazing. It was the floodgates, floodgates, well, yeah, had opened. Who signs that contract for the wedding? I guess it's a fine print thing. It doesn't matter. It's a fucking contract. I've had a wedding. I wouldn't sign that. That'd be like, uh, no. One, that's extortion. Two, are you planning to suck? Because that's the only reason you need a disclaimer like that. The internet and dumbasses. Will Jr. in the channel says the uh, the internet internet and dumbasses get along like lions and Christians. Yeah, pretty much. Because dumbasses kind of get eaten alive. Yeah, but but some dumbasses also rule the internet. Mm. True. I just it, it this and, and I love the bottom of the article. Um, Business Insider reached out, but Union Street Guest House was unavailable for comment. And that wasn't just this. Way. Apparently, tons of papers tried to talk to them and no one answered the phone all fucking day. One time uh, ours got like you ours technica got like a fax machine answered one time. <laughs> no, I don't answer that phone either. Do not taunt Happy Fun Ball. <laughs> CNBC did. Oh, well. Oh. Yeah. What did they say? I don't know. I don't particularly care because this is one of those situations where <laughs> five minutes on the internet, and you knew this would blow up in your fucking face. Yeah, like, like I feel like. They're like old man rulers in a Scooby Doo cartoon. Like, how'd you think you were gonna get away with this? It wasn't for you meddling kids Those and that darn kids. That yeah. pesky internet. Those darn kids were, were always going to catch you. Our last one tonight comes from an airplane. And I'm sure flight attendants have had to deal with have had to anticipate all manner of crazy bullshit. Like a shark NATO? Not a Sharknado. You know, Sharknado 2 opens on an airplane. Of course. And they totally rip on the William Shatner episode of the Twilight Zone. There's a shark on the wing of the plane. Shark on the wing, and nobody believes him. And I'm like, wow, that's fucking high art, man. Fucking Sharknado. And then there's Will Wheaton. And and, and, did you watch that movie? No. It was amazing. You could not pay me. Um, They're doing they're doing a fathom event. And showing it in theater. This, however, is maybe, I think, a rung below Sharknado, but also probably just as inconceivable. Uh, Snakes on a plane? No. Plane diverted. Plane makes emergency landing after drunk passenger attacks crew with prosthetic leg. Plane was diverted Wednesday. Rocket? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need that guy's leg. I really need it. No, really. I need that guy's leg. <laughs> plane was diverted Wednesday after uh, Wednesday night after an inebriated woman had the mild-mannered response of attacking flight crew with her prosthetic leg 
after they informed her that she couldn't, not only couldn't she have cigarettes, but she couldn't have access to a parachute so she could leave the aircraft and its stringent rules. 10.25 p.m. on Wednesday, 48-year-old woman, uh, unemployed woman from Edinburgh was arrested at the North Terminal Gatwick Airport on suspicion of using threatening behavior while on board Thompson Flight 297 from Tunisia to Edinburgh. The uh, flight was diverted to Gatwick after she alleged after it was alleged the woman had been abusive and thrown a prosthetic leg and food at cabin crew. She was swearing blue murder, saying she was going to do this and that and the other, so the flight was diverted. Passenger John Smith, no shit, 48, described a pretty for- horrifying scene to the Telegraph. She was shouting, quote, I want cigarettes. She wanted a parachute to jump off the plane. She slapped a young girl and then assaulted the cabin crew with her prosthetic leg. How were you going to start out? with only one. Captain America doesn't need a parachute, so, you know. But he has two legs. (laughs) This is one of those moments. Who doesn't know that they can't smoke on a plane anymore? I... Like, welcome to the 21st century. Clearly, you've been buried in Arctic ice. You can't smoke anywhere! Pretty much, no. You you literally... It kind of weirds me out when I see people smoking in public now. Like, I'm very conscious of it. I'm like, wow, this person's just straight up smoking. Yeah. And then I realize, I'm like, well, they're allowed. It's like a sidewalk, but it's weird to see now. Like, it's not the norm anymore. Okay, weary Katie. Look, lady, I know plane like plane tickets cost an arm and a leg, but this may be overreacting. Did you get that guy's leg? And I need your eye. No, he doesn't. No, I really do. <sighs> t- t- okay. This is a well-timed story because there's just so many rockets though. If you I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but if you need to smoke that badly. Maybe the parachute isn't your best plan. Maybe you just get the gum for the flight. Because you're not going to be able to smoke with the parachute either. I'm still addicted to the nicotine. And I'm on flights to see my girlfriend for like 12 hours or so. And you know what? I'm fine. I just use this fucker like a fiend once I get there. If you're that fucked up that you can't deal with it on the plane for like two, three hours, gum! Get the fucking Nicorette. It's, you can buy like a bulk pack of it for five fucking bucks. Well, maybe that's exaggerating, I mean, but still. They don't let me shoot up my heroin on the plane, but I just do like Charlie from Lost and rub it on my gum. You do what you have to do. I can't see you, but I feel like you're giving me some kind of look. I'm judging you. Whatever. Better than that. Let's see. Maybe. Trying to lose weight, man. Oh, there you are. Hi. Yeah, here I am. Yeah. No. But it's it's just for fuck's sake. Yeah, this this is this is definitely one of those first world problems kind of thing. Oh, I'm so sorry. You can't have your cancer. And I understand that smokers feel somewhat marginalized in our no longer smoke friendly society. And I'm sorry about that. You have options. But the, yeah, like you're still free to do all the other things to kill yourself that don't kill other people around you. You can still drink yourself into cirrhosis on a plane. Yep. They let you do that. Well, appa- well apparently she cirrhosis. was. But she needed well, to have yeah. a cigarette while she was doing it. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Can you imagine waking Apparently up? Apparently you can't have gum on a flight. What are you supposed to do if your ears pop? I think they're fucking with you. They're likely. You have to have gum you. on a plane. Yes, you like that. Just can you imagine you're a flight attendant. And you find yourself in a situation where a one legged woman is threatening to jump out of the plane, swing her leg, threatening to jump out of the plane 
drunk off her ass, and you think to yourself, this is my life. How did I get here? Oh, God. You might ask yourself, well, how did I get Up! Oh. Stop motion, Tara. Um... <laughs> No, it's just, it's just oh, really yeah. We were doing so well. We were doing so well. Just my my God, man! <laughs> oh, no, you're mine. Um. However, you know, every single person on that flight, the minute her voice perked up, the iPhones came out. Oh yeah. Everyone's going, original content, I am monetizing the fuck out of this shit. Or at least using it in court. Hey, lady, 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 swing your leg over this way. Swing, yeah, uh, there you go. Good shot, good shot. Continue. Don't assault people with parts of your body that you need. Yeah. Because eventually you might want to run away. And you do and this shit removed your leg you can't and you do this shit and you know what the tsa is going to do they're going to start taking your fucking leg not that there's anywhere to run on a plane yeah they're going to start taking legs fucking prosthetic legs you're going to take your legs this could be like a pile of legs and arms next to the to the metal detector next time you go out the airport you'll be like what's that terrorism and we'll have this lady to thank for it yep I'm going to need that guy's leg. <laughs> I, I guess the, the, the first thing we learned tonight is I know you're addicted to the nicotine, but you have options yeah. that don't involve parachutes. If, if you know you're going to be in a place where you're not allowed to do a thing for a certain amount of time, right. it's on you to plan accordingly. It's not on them to change the rules. Seriously! Uh, she really went out on a limb. Oh. oh. Wah, wah. My chat. We learned that apparently it is, we are well into the 21st century and businesses still do not understand internet. How is that possible? Oh. It keeps <laughs> happening. <laughs> And again, it, man. this is a Vanderbilt establishment. You would think after that shit with Facebook, they would be all over that shit, son. Poor Anderson Cooper is probably so embarrassed. Yeah. We learned that, you know, if you get drunk enough that you're having trouble finding your vehicle, you probably shouldn't be in your vehicle or anyone else's. Well, I mean, if someone has agreed to drive you home. But yes. not, not with the, the part with the wheel behind it. But you, yeah, you shouldn't be driving anything. And you certainly shouldn't be trying to make new friends. It's okay. I just got to get to my car. It's cool. Nick Fury call. It's all right. Um, we've learned that people do imitate TV and the Kool-Aid man was a bad influence. Yeah, we saw that coming. I mean, that wouldn't be the beverage icon I would expect people to emulate. This is kind of like, where are they now? Where's the Kool-Aid man? Well, he's knocking over convenience stores for 12 packs. He's had a rough couple of years. Oh, no! Uh, <laughs> that's a mugshot I'd love to see, honestly. Uh, we learned that some people can't tell the difference between... Two words that sound alike, but have nothing to fucking do with one another. Things like homophone, homophobe. They kind of sound a little alike. Nothing to do with one another. Which ironically is the definition of a homophobe. People have gotten so messed up about the gay fucking. That anything that even remotely reminds them of the gay you know fucking. I feel like there's a lot of people, a lot of people who just go through their day looking for shit to be offended by. I think like this has become our default setting. Like 
what can I be offended by today? Gay fucking just bitch about it on the internet or fire somebody or sue somebody. Like this is becoming what we are. We're just looking for shit that pushes our delicate little buttons. And you know what? Like, first of all, think before you do that shit, because you could wind up like this guy and look like an idiot. Second, harden the fuck up. Like, not not like, like there aren't things worth being offended by in this world, but for God's sake. Gay fucking Sometimes has made people crazy. You, you, you cannot be that upset all the time. You have to be able to be a happy person. I don't know what it is about gay fucking that makes people crazy, but it makes people crazy. I don't get it. I, I don't get like why do you care what someone else does with their tackle? It's not your unit, right? Who cares? Are you the dick inspector? No, shut the fuck up. Are they putting their dick in you without no, your consent? No, then no. Then that's a problem. Shut the fuck up. If not, don't worry about it. None of your business. And Leave it alone. Finally, we learned that if your flesh is indeed searing from your body in a torrent of flame. This is an emergency. If you are being devoured by a wild animal, entrails first. This is an emergency. Your goddamn Facebook going down. Not an emergency. Don't call 911, you silly shit. What if you're being devoured feet first? Isn't that still an emergency? They have more time.